Friends, welcome back to another show. So what we're going to do today is talk a lot about T-cell immunity. There's some speculation amongst pundits in the media that the United States and the world may not achieve herd immunity. And so today I want to focus in a little bit more about why T-cell immunity is really important and some of the strategies that you can implement in your life to optimize the functioning of your T-cells. Because as it turns out, when you get exposed to a pathogen, what tends to happen, uh, and, and the immunologic memory uh, physiology, the immunophysiologic effect uh, of, of, of a post-viral infection, for example, is highly dependent upon T-cell functioning and T-cell immunity because the T-cells crosstalk with the antibody-producing B-cells, and the T-cells are sort of upregulated first in the initial path of infection. So as I've been learning a little bit more about immunopathology specific to SARS-CoV-2 and the lifestyle interventions or mediating factors that we all have volitional control over to improve my own immune system and that of my family and my clients, uh, I've been exploring a lot of research into T-cell immunity. And I realized that there wasn't a lot of good sort of sources for this in the mainstream media. So I wanted to take a deep dive today here live on YouTube uh, the day before Mother's Day to just sort of explain this to you. So the importance of talking about this is our lifestyle has a huge impact on the health and the trajectory of our T cell health. And we're going to dive into the different types of T cells and ways you can optimize the functioning of that. But again, you need to realize that there is crosstalk and that crosstalk between your T cells and your antibody producing B cells is contingent upon your immune health. And again, this is why lifestyle medicine needs to be part of this conversation. Uh, it's really fascinating. I think you'll enjoy the show. Plus, we're going to talk about a new assay where you can, if, if you think that you've been exposed to uh, SARS-CoV-2 or, or another related uh, uh, coronavirus, there's a new T cell assay that might be a little bit better for you to, to sort of check out. So hopefully that echo is gone. I want to thank you all for being here. But first, uh, my neighbor actually, Phil, who's a history teacher for high school students, shared this with me. So we're hearing a lot about in the media, you know, hey, this, this pathogen is affecting younger and younger people. What's going on with this? So this was a report of 4,000 individuals that was a survey conducted by CNBC, I believe, and it goes to show that 44% of millennials, these are people under the age of 40, uh, but born, I'm a millennial, by the way, born between the years 1980 and 1992, have chronic medical conditions. So again, when the media is saying it's younger and younger people are getting impacted by this pathogen, we need to realize that just because someone is young doesn't mean that they're sort of uh, free or they don't have any uh, you know, predisposition towards chronic uh, health ailments um, or lingering effects or long haul syndrome. So, you know, if you have asthma, if you have allergies, if you have hypertension, we're going to focus on, on the connection between hypertension and T cell immunity today. But I wanted to share that with you. Um, so let's sort of uh, dive into it. So here's where we're going with this conversation. This is a great visual. If you're listening on iTunes, you can see this image. But um, what is interesting when it comes to the physiology of your immune system is your immune, your T cells are highly, uh, as I mentioned, malleable to your diet and your lifestyle, and they tend to age. And they're a proxy, a, a reflection of your biologic age. And so we know that our lifestyle choices impact our biologic age. We talked about that last week, and we, re we reviewed that study with Kara Fitzgerald and Ryan Bradley that showed that lifestyle changes can impact uh, can impact the outcome. Of, uh, of biologic age. And so, so if you want to learn more about that, revisit that conversation. Um, but first, this was in the news, and I, I just want to share this with you. It, it, does, it, it ties into this conversation later on. I want to share this right now with you. But um, the title of this uh, review by Brazilian researchers is A Big Mistake of Not Considering Physical Activity as an Essential Element of Care During COVID-19, the COVID-19 Pandemic. So again, uh, throughout the last year, we talked about how silly it was to close fitness centers and gyms because exercise is a, is a potent immune enhancer. And we're going to dive into the specific mechanisms by which exercise affects your T cells and why T cell immunity and memory is so important. But these researchers are literally echoing what we've been saying on this channel for the past year. We got a lot of flack. We got a lot of people unsubscribed from our audio podcast and YouTube for even suggesting that, that people should go to the gym because there was this illusion that gyms are uh, centers of pestilence. And this is where you get really sick because people are touching things. But we realize that that the protective effect of exercise outweighs the potential uh, exposure or, or source of transmission. And guess what? 
scientists and researchers are saying the exact same thing. So for those of you that accuse me of being a grandma killer, how about them apples? Check out this paper. Okay, so let's uh, continue on and uh, sort of talk about uh, regular exercise and T-cell immunity and all that sort of stuff. Um, so here we go with the conversation. But first, uh, I, I do want to let you know, and this is not sponsored whatsoever, uh, I have tried to reach out to T-Detect. To see, this is the company, T-Detect.com. This is the only FDA-approved or uh, it's approved for emergency youth authorization uh, for assessing T-cell immunity when it comes to this specific pathogen, SARS-CoV-2. So if you You've tested your antibodies because we know that roughly 100, at least probably 100 million people have been exposed to this, whether they know it or not, uh, based upon the known, uh, you know, confirmed uh, cases. Uh, there's probably what I think 34 million known cases here in the U.S. Uh, so multiply that by by at least four or five. That's how many actual cases there are, uh, according to epidemiologists. So uh, this this T detect will help you uh, assay T cell immunity and uh, help you decide or help you understand, you know, your immunity. So uh, the importance of this, of measuring this, uh, I just had a friend, Victoria Field, you may know her, she runs, uh, co-runs the Metabolic Health Summit with uh, Angela Poff and Dom D'Agostino, a wonderful conference that has been on a year hiatus due to the pandemic, but she's struggled with um, you know, the virus and she's one of the only metabolically healthy people that's actually metabolically healthy that has had challenges. And I say that because I know her diet, her lifestyle. She's been on the podcast. She's an amazing person. She really walks the walk. And she she expressed disappointment in the fact that she didn't have antibodies, even though she had a relatively, I wouldn't say severe, but a more moderate to severe course of illness. And she's been very transparent about this on her Instagram. So I'm not you know sharing things that aren't publicly known. Her Instagram is, is, is available. You can check it out. But, uh, you know, I, again, I wanted to share this because people can be disappointed that they don't have antibodies. But as we're going to talk about soon, your T cells are arguably more important. If you could pick one or the other, if you're like, OK, well, uh, if I could wave a magic wand and give your grandparents either antibodies or T cell T cell immunity, I would go T cell immunity all day long. And, and here's why, because what your T cells have longer lasting memory compared to your, your antibodies and the half-life or the decay of T-cell memory uh, is about 10 years according to, and it's probably dependent upon the type of exposure, but uh, several studies have gone back to 2003 finding that healthcare workers in the first outbreak of SARS-CoV-1, they had T-cell immunity um, for 18 years. So this is really important and people can be discouraged if they know they've been infected and they test their antibodies and they don't have antibodies and they're scratching their head going, what's what's wrong with me? Uh, less, you know, don't be concerned. Go to tdetect.com. This is a $150 assay and you can take your, um, your you basically take it to LabCorp. They do the draw and send it to you. I'm going to do mine this week. I'll, I'll share with you because I do have antibodies to the spike protein and the nucleocapsid. We've shared that on other videos. So we're going to get into T-cell immunity. But first, friends, I do want to let you know that this video and this podcast is brought to you by myoscience.com, tool to help you feel better, sleep better, move better. We have a great promotion going on right now where you can get an ebook that will help you build and learn how to do one of the most effective exercises for your lower body, that is your glutes. Your glutes are, are weak on a lot of people. A lot of people have saggy glutes. This should be the biggest muscle in your body. Really uh, helpful for aging, for low back pain, for avoiding knee pain. So if you use the coupon code GLUT15 at checkout on any one of our formulations and any order over $49 before the discount, you can get access to that ebook and the video that will help you learn how to build your own amazing hip thruster out of wood for under $30 at Home Depot or using any tools. So you can save on some of our amazing uh, vitamin D3 formulations, uh, essential fat Fatty nutrients features vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 together, synergistic nutrients that are great for bone health, skin health, supporting immune health, and much more. So you can go to our go to myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. Please use the coupon code GLUT15 at checkout. That coupon does expire this Monday. So I definitely want to take advantage of that. Okay, so let's just let's just dive right into uh, T cells. Uh, sorry for that long sort of uh, uh, overview, but wanted to just give you just kind of set the stage because I, I hopefully this conversation will help to solidify 
in your mind what the T cells are doing, how it's different from the B cells and antibodies so that we can all have better conversations and, and detect things. So uh, here's a great paper, Adaptive Immunity to SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. So uh, one of the things that we gotta sort of all remember is when we eat processed foods and we don't exercise, uh, and we're sitting around and we have circadian rhythm disruptions and we're not fasting, we're feeding all the time. What happens is we're burdening our body's innate immune system. So you have your innate immune system and your adaptive immune system. And the way that I was thinking about like this morning when I was preparing for this video, the way the analogy that I was sort of thinking about is uh, I used to have backyard pigs. We had two pigs and they would eat anything. So if I, I could throw carrots uh, into the pig pen, they could roll around and mud the carrots, that is the food, and they would eat it no matter what. Whatever went in there was fair game, right? So that's kind of your innate immune system. It doesn't, they didn't have memory. They weren't like, the pigs weren't like, well, are these carrots, have they been peeled? Have they been broiled? Have they been cooked? They didn't care. They just ate the carrots. Whereas my daughter, when she was four years old, um, you know, pigs have the intelligence of a four-year-old child. You know, if, if, if the food didn't just taste right, she would remember it. And then next time she wouldn't like it. And they had, they're really kind of picky. They have memory and all that. So if you want to think about your, your immune system, your innate immune system is just go. When it senses a signal, it's it's all or nothing. There's no memory. It's just going to go and attack and phagocytize and release cytokines, interferon gamma, natural killer cells, you know, uh, monocytes and all that. It's, it's, it's just when it receives a stimulus, it's on, just like the pigs are going to eat whatever comes in. Whereas your, your adaptive immune system has memory. And so it can differentiate and say, okay, is this friend or foe? Should we attack this tissue? Is this self tissue? Is this a pathogen? Is this an intracellular obligate, uh, you know, basically a pathogen, which is a virus? parasite that's what viruses are they they go inside your cells they use your own cellular machinery they replicate then they start spewing out material and 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 it's this you know domino rolling downhill and it, it depends upon your innate immune system recognizing that and stopping it early and then your adaptive immune system uh you remembering certain amino acid sequences and your T cells are really intricately involved there. And so the, the importance of, of kind of talking to you about that analogy is we need to understand that we create chronic, we can burden our innate immune system with chronic inflammation by eating processed foods, by having intestinal permeability, altered gut bacteria, altered circadian rhythms, rhythms. So if your innate immune system is being burdened or is weakened, well, what's going to happen then is your viral load can increase and then that creates more challenges and problems down the road. And so this is what's sort of the average infection and you can sort of see your initial innate immune system should have a nice early bump. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna, and this is a great visual if you're watching in iTunes, you might wanna uh, check this out on, on YouTube. And then your T cells kick in and then even later after that, you get your antibodies forming. So as you can see here, uh, from a quantitative standpoint, what should happen in, in this and what's associated with a mild course of illness is proper T cell immunity. And that's differentiated from severe outcomes or death where there is insufficient T cell immunity and insufficient early innate immunity. Again, this is why individuals who even receive the pharmaceutical version of, of you know, immune system support, the jab, the shot, whatever you want to call it, uh, this is why they still, those individuals, if they've been fully immunized, should still make healthy lifestyle changes because we need, even if you've had the immunization, you need a healthy communication between your adaptive and innate immune system. You still need that because antibodies are not the end all. All they do is sort of neutralize extra, they, they basically neutralize cells that have been infected, but the T cells go in and actually kill the virus that are, that are infected inside your cells. So this is a little different actually. So let me read to you a little bit more about this so you can understand the difference between antibodies and T cell immunity. I thought this was a really good oversimplification. So here's just some notes here. In oversimplified terms, antibodies mostly stop viruses outside of cells, and T cells stop viruses inside of cells. This powerful division of labor has proven to be success, a successful complementary approach uh, to, to most viral infections in most individuals. In a natural infection, the adaptive immune response takes time to develop, and many cells are already, already infected by the time an antibody response develops. Frequently, antibodies alone cannot clear an ongoing infection. It also takes T cells. This may be why SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibody titers have not correlated with lessened disease severity in primary COVID-19. 
Let me read that again. It's really important. This may be why SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies. We're hearing all about this in the media. Antibodies, antibodies, antibodies. But the, the antibodies titers are not correlated with reduced disease severity. In fact, going on, there were two unrelated cases uh, of individuals who were in Italy who had this um, a gamma globulin anemia, which essentially means that they don't have B cells. B cells are the factories that make your antibodies. So if you don't have B cells, this is this uh, a, a gamma globulin anemia, a, a defect in B cells. So these individuals couldn't make antibodies, but guess, guess what? Uh, these were these were adults, and they survived and fully recovered uh, a relatively severe COVID nineteen infection. So it, it suggests that antibodies. Um, are, are somewhat dispensable. They are important, they are helpful, but they're not the whole story. We should be focusing more on T cells. And so it, it goes on to um, you know, talk about, you know, as long as you have a sufficient and robust T cell immune response, then you're going to have not only lasting immunity, but probably reduced viral load and so forth. So T cells are important, but remember, T cells are highly influenced by your diet, your lifestyle, and exercise. Uh, I, I can't underemphasize this enough. We're going to get into the details of that. And here's one of the papers. You might want to take a screenshot of this paper and, and, and read it if you're a, a nerd like me. The title is Successful and Maladaptive T Cell Aging. So our T cells, again, I'm being repetitive because I want this to stick in your mind. Uh, T cells, uh, gosh, I have an image here. I'll show it to you. Here's what I'm seeing. It's not showing up great. So let's go to this image because I don't know what's going on with my wire cast. So there's all sorts of different types of T cells. You know, you have your um, yeah, yeah, different uh, effector T cells. You have... Um, Let's get into to some of this. You have CD8 and CD4 T cells. So we, we want to focus what seems to be most important when it comes to this particular pathogen is the CD4 T helper cells that are found here. Now, again, as you're seeing here, um, T cells start to decline with age, but you can change that. You can augment that with your diet and your lifestyle and your exercise. Um, so here's here's uh, the important visual because this is going to this is where we're we're, we're going to sort of go with this and focus um, on on these exhausted or senescent T cells that you see here in gray. So you have these naive T cells that are made um, in, in your thymus gland and so forth, and and so they're they're exposed to say antigens like a, a different pathogen, SARS-CoV-2 or or other, and then they start to hang around those tissues where there was exposure. So they'll hang around your lungs, they hang around lymphatic tissue, lymphoid tissue, and so forth. And what what happens is they differentiate into uh, memory T cells. You have uh, you know, these follicular T cells, you have exhausted T cells, you have um, effector T cells and all this. But what tends to happen as you age is you get a higher prevalence of exhausted or senescent T cells. And this is the visual right here. And that's inducible and that's reversible, okay, with your diet and lifestyle. So if you want to have sufficient protection, whether you've been immunized or not, uh, whether you're exposed to people whether you give a crap about this virus or or want to maximize protection for any future virus down the road or even influenza. Remember, the cold, common cold kills people. Uh, T cells are involved in cancer uh, immunity and autoimmunity as well. Um, we're going to get into intestinal permeability and porousness uh, of, of the vasculature in, in just a moment. But we need to realize that uh, as you age, your T cells are, are negatively influenced um, by poor diet lifestyle choices. And that's why you see higher prevalences of cancer, higher prevalences of autoimmune disease with aging and increased disease severity when it comes to this. So um, what but what tends to happen if you look, if you focus your attention, please here on the right, what you're seeing here is this senescent T cell. So this senescent T cell uh, tends to accumulate uh, with aging. And what this essentially does is it causes the other T cells to become more aberrant or dysfunctional. So um, it will sort of send what's called this senescence associated secretory phenotype. I know that's a big word. I'm not trying to like, you know, overwhelm you with words, but it's important to realize that when you have bad or senescent cells, cells that have accelerated aging, biologic aging. Uh, this is Biologic aging is different than chronologic aging. And this is where the rubber meets the road with healthy living and exercise. Because 
regular exercisers tend to have a lower percentage of senescent T cells, even aged individuals. So elderly individuals who have been regular exercising, and I'm writing a whole book on this so you can know all the details on this, but here's the short uh, elevator pitch. When you regularly exercise, you tend to purge and send signals to your immune system to get rid of these senescent T cells that make uh, that that essentially change this phenotype so that you have less less exhausted T cells and more short term and long term effector and memory T cells. That's the important point. I know that the nuances of this get a little complicated and there's names here that are sort of, uh, there's a lot of medical jargon and so forth. But what you need to realize is that if you want to change the trajectory and the biologic age of your immune system, you need to prioritize healthy living. And this is where lifestyle change really matters because, you know, there's this sort of bifurcation with um, you know, the health and the sort of senescence of your, your T cells that's, that's commensurate with your level of exercise, your volume of exercise, and your diet and your lifestyle. Does this make sense? Uh, I'm, I'm going to just pop in on the chat here and see if we're, we're doing okay. Um, there's a lot of messages here and so forth. So uh, I will get to those very, very soon. We're going to get to your live questions here. That's what we like to do on Science on a Saturday, but just wanted to pop in. So uh, let me just pause. And if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. That just lets me know that maybe we should do more videos on this. Is this too complex? Is this a little bit medical jargonistic? I don't want to lose you in the details, but I, I really felt like in my sort of exploration into this, this topic, I couldn't find mainstream sources that that help me understand this, and I I want to share this with you. So, um, as I was mentioning, let's let's focus on. Um, I'm gonna um, I, let, let's look at this image right here. So you see this course of infection. You see the T cells, and then you see the antibodies. Now, what happens is there's a lot of crosstalk and interconnection between the T cells telling your B cells to start making antibodies. So this is where I think this T detect might be. Uh, a great test but first because people can have a little bit more reassurance in going, okay, well, I do have some sort of immunologic memory. That helps me and, and makes me feel a little bit more comfortable uh, being around grandparents or more vulnerable uh, individuals. So let's get, let's get into this. So CD4 T helper cells have the ability to differentiate into a range of helper and effector T cell types with the capacity to instruct B cells uh, and help CD8 T helper cells recruit innate immune system cells. And in and of themselves, these T cells have direct antiviral activities and facilitate tissue repair. So these are really, really important um, stuff here. So there was this hypothesis that overweight, pre-diabetic, chronically inflamed individuals have this bi Bias and it's skewed and and that uh, towards a, sort of a, a T, TH2 dominant uh, immune system and we'll get into that in a moment here but but that sort of thing is going on so uh, TH1 cells have antiviral activities via production of interferon gamma and related cytokines uh, T, T follicular T cells which are TFH that's what they're uh, sort of the acronym in medical research uh, these uh, t follicular T cells are specialized providers of B cell help. So they help the B cells make the antibodies. So your T cells are really important for immune memory uh, and are critical for the development of most neutralizing uh, anti autoantibody responses and antibody responses, as well as memory B cells and lasting humoral immunity. So this is where the rubber meets the road if we're talking about herd immunity. And that's important. That's why we're talking about this right now, because over the last week, there was a lot of pundits that are essentially saying, the United States, pff, there's no way that we're going to reach herd immunity until we vaccinate every single you know, man, woman, and child. But what if we were to mandate exercise? What if we were to incentivize exercise? What if we were to incentivize healthy living so that we could optimize T-cell immunity? Because, because, friends, this is the paper that I've been wanting to share with you for a long time. The title of this is Recent Endemic Coronavirus Infection is Associated with uh, Less Severe COVID-19. So remember, there's all sorts of different types of beta coronaviruses that infect humans, not just SARS-CoV-2. Many of the common cold-causing pathogens are actually beta coronaviruses and their shared sequence homology, which means that the structural proteins within these more benign human coronaviruses are actually uh, your, your immune system and your T cells specifically, your memory T cells that are influenced by your level of exercise and exercise intensity and your lifestyle choices, they remember shared sequences between these more benign common cold-causing viruses and SARS-CoV-2. 
So remember, there's all this push that we need to vaccinate every child. And, 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 and not until we vaccinate these children will we sort of be out of the woods on this pandemic. But we need to remember that kids are commonly exposed to other coronaviruses. And this study actually showed that individuals who, who had tested positive for a common cold causing coronavirus and later tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 had much less disease severity compared to people who were not exposed to more benign common cold causing coronaviruses. So let the kids go to school without masks. Let them share bugs and everything because guess what? Their T cells are more snappy, more responsive, more resilient. They will make more lasting immunity. And in the shared sequence and, and sort of homologous futures of these more benign cold causing coronaviruses and SARS-CoV-2 can help us uh, you know, have, have more uh, immunity. And so this, I thought, was a really interesting study. <clears throat> You're not going to hear about this in the media because... The push, I feel like we, we keep making myopic decision after myopic decision on the public policy level. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, what else do we need to talk about on this here? Oh, this was a really interesting quote from one of these papers that uh, we're going to get into before we talk about uh, tight junctions and intestinal permeability, which is really fascinating, uh, and its associations with epithelial permeability in the lungs and endothelial permeability in the blood vessels. Really fascinating stuff, but check out this quote. Sometimes the immune response to a viral infection is more damaging than the viral infection itself. Think about that, right? So what's actually causing immunopathology and challenges is, is individuals is their over-exuberant immune system. So we need to be able to respond, but also peel it back and turn it off. And it seems that these people that are chronically inflamed, they don't have that flexibility. So metabolic flexibility, it seems, creates immunologic flexibility and the ability to mount an early and robust immune system and then quickly turn it off. An, an, an early and robust immune response. Okay, um, yeah, let's let's sort of get into this now. I do want to mention we do have a uh, a thymus glandular extract that might be helpful uh, for today's challenges. You might want to check that out over at MyoScience. But uh, let's get into let's get into permeability. This is a really sort of under recognized conversation and topic. The idea. And one of my old mentors, uh, this is going back, Harry Einier and, and um, uh, Dr. Moss and so forth over at Moss Nutrition. There's a lot of people that have been uh, talking about this. David Brady has been talking about this, that, if you, that these tight junction proteins that uh, help keep epithelial cells uh, in your gut. So if you have adjacent cells, you know, your intestinal epithelium, if you have these, all these little cells put together, what's linking them and keeping them together is, are these tight junction proteins. And it turns out, that pathogens, including intracellular obligate parasites, which are viruses, uh, what they do is they disrupt these tight junction proteins because they're what what intracellular parasites or viruses are intended to do. They how they replicate because they don't have ribosomes and all these things to make proteins. They use your own cellular machinery, but first they have to get inside your own cells. They do that via the ACE2 receptor. They get inside your cells. They start replicating like crazy. And then they're starting to destroy the cells and spew out a bunch of uh, uh, new viruses that can go repeat that process over and over and over. Now, how they do this uh, effectively is they disrupt the epithelial and endothelial barrier. So what you're seeing here in purple, uh, actually above in this image, what you're seeing, and I can actually make this bigger for all of you because this is super fascinating and I know you nerds are going to love this. So what you're seeing here is a bunch of different pathogens from H1N1 influenza to adenovirus, you're seeing cytomegalovirus, CV, uh, you, know, you know, RSV, you're seeing uh, human papilloma, all of these things. Uh, and so what you're seeing here are, are cells, for example, of the uh, you could, these could be endothelial cells of the, of the cardiovascular system. This could be epithelial cells of the lungs or in the gastrointestinal system, the GI tract. You just have this single cell layer, right? You need to get oxygen across. You need to get uh, carbon dioxide out. You need to get nutrients in, in the gut and so forth. And what you're seeing in purple and green are these tight junction proteins, uh, zonulin, clodulin, occludin, all of these. Well, it turns out that guess what? Viruses have have adapted different mechanisms that enable them to disrupt the tight junction proteins. Now, why is that important? Well, a lot of people that are eating processed food, that are eating junk food, that are stressed out, that aren't exercising and so forth, they already have pre-existing tight junction dysfunction. People that are eating wheat, gluten, corn, 
uh, people that are drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, people that are smoking cigarettes, people that are inhaling diesel fume exhaust and pollution, uh, all of these things actually perturb tight junction integrity and proteins. So you have intestinal permeability, you have leaky lungs, you have leaky blood vessels. And why do you think people with chronic conditions, 90, the CDC said 94 to 96% of individuals that died had you know two or more chronic health conditions that is characteristic of vascular and epithelial uh, loss of integrity. And here we have it. This was a, a, a paper. Uh, the SARS-CoV viruses are known to disrupt uh, epithelial function. So we, we need to remember, I'm a huge fan of, of eating fermented foods, prebiotics, probiotics. I'm mean, not going overboard, but especially for people that have gastrointestinal issues, health issues, make an effort to eat kimchi or sauerkraut or make your own yogurts at home. Because we know that uh, having uh, you know good bacteria that can crosstalk with the epithelial layer uh, can help um, improve and, and and decrease some of this uh, this leakiness or this porousness that might impact viral load. So that's another consideration for people that have you know um, gut issues, why they might have a more severe disease state. So uh, this is actually a direct quote from from this paper that I just shared with you. So uh, there's these envelope proteins on, on the virus. Uh, and so uh, what I'll do here is uh, it gets really complicated. Uh, the C-terminal class, hydrophobic, PDZ, binding motif, whatever. So this PBM protein that's found in SARS-CoV-2 has been shown to interact with your own uh, tight junction proteins on epithelial cells and disrupt the tight junctions uh, and causing uh, tight, uh, t- causing uh, adjacent epithelial cells to be more porous uh, so that viruses can quickly infect them. So what this goes back to is gut health, uh, whole body health, nutrition. Uh, all of these things are, are important, right? Lifestyle medicine needs to be part of the conversation. And uh, I know that was a lot of technical stuff today, friends, but hopefully it was helpful. I, I would love to know any feedback that you have on this. And, uh, you know, if, if these conversations are, are helpful, um, again, we're, we're, I know everyone's sort of uh, sick of talking about <laughs> this virus. Uh, before we get to your live questions, what I do want to remind you uh, is ending tomorrow is the giveaway. We're giving away two My DNA Age epigenetic age tests, okay? Now, the way that you get access to this is you just leave us a review in iTunes, um, and then you, you can send a screenshot over on that over to my Instagram, Metabolic Mike, or send me an email, Mike at High Intensity Health, uh, with your review you so that we're going to put your your name into a box and randomly pick two winners here and the reason why I'm doing all that as opposed to just giving it away right here right now to someone is I want it to be someone who is really serious about assessing their diet and life, lifestyle so it's going to take you probably 45 seconds of investment you go to a high intensity health and iTunes you you just leave us some feedback it could be positive or negative critical whatever uh, and and then just let us know um, how we can contact you so take a screenshot of that send it over to me on Instagram or send me an email Mike at high intensity health say hey here's my here's my review and then we're going to send two of these out to a random winner so we've already had quite a few of those and so i want to thank you but if you haven't yet sent us a screenshot so we can connect with you i I do want to make sure we send these out to you on monday so we have two winners these tests are normally over 400 dollars it's a unique way to assay your biologic age so that's uh again um you can re-listen to that if you want to learn how to do that i'll put i'll put um you know in the description of this uh more details about how to do that so let's get to some of your live questions um as we, we sort of talk about, um, finish this off. So as always, I'm grateful that you're here. Um, what's going on all? All right. So sound is fixed, which is great. Um, okay. Okay. Swamp Hawk says he found, or she found a random live stream. <laughs> cool for that. Uh, Soren says any info on T cell spot to assay cellular immunity. Yeah. So the way to the, the test here is called tdetect.com. So that's, that's, that, I'll leave that here. Uh, uh, by the way, friends, I am not getting any financial, you know, kickback or anything by mentioning this. Um, I wish I was, but I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, just, I just want you to know about, about this, uh, company. Uh, I think it's cool. Um, I haven't vetted them. I've just heard about this, and I want to thank my my friend Ben Wheats. He's a chiropractor in uh, Santa Monica who actually turned me on to this company. So, Dr. Ben Wheats, thank you for that. Um, okay, okay. Uh, what else do we have? Chris says, um, if you're being accused of grandma killer, then those people who are not serious have... Yeah. Um, okay. 
I'm just saying there's a lot of comments here. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. Let's see. Uh, Private Harley Street Clinic is offering T-lymphocyte T-cell testing. Um, so that must be Harley Street. I think that's in London. Um, so that might be for London folks. I'm not sure. Um, all right. Okay, so uh, Dig Nig Dig. NIB says, doesn't fasting increase T-cell count in your body? Yeah, so fasting may actually affect the cellular senescence of T-cells. So if we look here and we see senescent T-cells in the gray, intermittent fasting, exercise, things like that, probably heat stress, sauna stress, um, it's purported and you know, other, other sort of uh, synolytic therapies purge the cells on the right that you want to get rid of, uh, the exhausted and the senescent T cells, because you want to have more effector and memory T cells and follicular T cells. So that might be, that might be sort of what's going on there uh, with exercise. So that's a great question uh, on that uh, and with regards to fasting. Okay, T cells are like soldiers searching out to destroy the target. Uh, Ruth, I love that. That's a great thing. Uh, great, great thing. That's a great uh, analogy. Laura says, hello from Oregon. Thanks for the detailed information. Do you have any other videos on what you recommend taking to prevent helping to recover from uh, the Rona? I do. Um, I actually, when I didn't know that I had the Rona, when I made a video on what I do to recover from uh, sickness, but I made a video on all the things that I did. And so if you go back to early December, I shared that podcast with you exactly what I took. Um, uh it's just me. It's just one one person's perspective, opinion, and, and what I found helpful. So um, check it out, Laura. Um, okay, I'm doing a 16-8 when I get back from vacation. I love that approach. That is amazing. Um, what else do we have here? Andrea says, you read my mind. I was discussing the issue with a friend of mine. Also, CD8 are very interesting. Yes, so the T-cell immunity is quite fascinating. Um, okay, TH101 says, Mike, great content. Thank you for that. What is your fasting cycle? So yeah, on normal days, I'm doing a 16-8 uh, time-restricted feeding. And so what I, I this is about the time that I, I will break my fast. It's about 11 o'clock here on Saturday morning. Uh, so again, thank you all for being here uh, on a Saturday morning. But that's usually when I will start to, I start to get pretty hungry. Uh, around this time and especially when I'm physically active. So um, I spend a lot of time riding, riding bicycles. I like to uh, you know, do mountain biking, do hiking, lifting weights. And so I start to get hungry and I'll usually stop around seven. So it's usually about 11 to seven, an eight hour window for me, plus or minus 30, 40 minutes on, on one side or the other. Um, but that's usually using my window. And I try to do at least a 24 hour fast on a Monday, unless I'm absolutely ravenously hungry, uh, in which case I'll just do a one meal a day on Monday. So I think periodic and sort of random-ish uh, calorie restriction uh, is helpful. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I do. Okay, uh, what the public doesn't understand, this is a comment here, uh, is that ultimately it's our immune system that kills pathogens, not uh, not um, immunizations. Yeah, this is a great point. Your, your, the immunizations sort of instruct your immune system. It sort of preloads. If you think about software like here's my iphone you know um if you get a software update it's preloading your iphone with new information it's not really changing the phone per se the the hardware it's just changing the software well uh, immunizations are similar where they're they're giving on a silver platter hey this is the most specific antigen that you might want to make memory to and that's the case the spike protein that's being you know in, in the the you know uh, rna messenger rna information is being injected into people's arm uh, so that their their ribosomes can start to produce the spike protein and the uh, your, your own immune system should recognize that as non-self and it should then make uh immunologic memories from from both b cells uh, t cells to to remember that so that when it sees that in the future it can uh, have sort of an advantage uh to to have a, a preloaded immune response but yeah you're right it's ultimately the immune system so um, health ultimately matters, and that's why we should have made exercise a uh, the main thing. So here's the article. I'll just leave that up here as we're talking, that the people are talking about. Okay, what else do we have, guys and gals? Um, someone said, okay, so Chris says, I have MS and uh, GBS. Uh, I definitely am dealing with insulin resistance. I do carnivore and inter intermittent fasting. Plus, I have plaque manel for my MS, which also helps. Okay, thank you, Chris, for that. Soren says, how could I assess in a simple way the cytotoxic pathway in my office to those with no IgG to SARS-CoV-2? 
Uh, so Soren, the, the assay is tdetect.com, tdetect.com. Again, no financial affiliation with these guys uh, or gals company, um, but, but that would be the way that you would assay that. Um, Kathy says, bought some ivermectin and also hydro hydroxychloroquine on hand. I have been hearing from a lot of people that they're taking um, more hydroxychloroquine and getting good, good uh, effects from that. Okay, Kathy G says, my 71-year-old husband is getting his colon uh, next week. Colonoscopy, maybe. Uh, but th that she put colon next week, but first is required to get the COVID test. What do you think about the test itself? Oh, yeah, so just getting a test. I would just, just do a rapid antigen test. Just non-invasive, not worried about that. Um, no worries about that. Um, okay. Uh, Nathan says, can you make more videos about how to increase an immune response via breath work and cold exposure and how they correlate with each other when done simultaneously? Uh, Nathan, yeah, this is a great, great question. You know, we actually did a video uh, this time last year and, and reviewed all the science on that. So again, you know, I, I, we've been talking about immune health and uh, lifestyle uh, supportive strategies for the past over well over a year now as, as regards to this pandemic. So Nathan, what you can do or anyone listening, you can use the search future on our YouTube channel and just type in breathwork and immunity. And you will actually see the video that we did where we, we reviewed some of the specific mechanisms by which a Wim Hof hyperventilation followed by retention breathwork impacts the immune system. We talked about exercising much more in that video and shared with you uh, all the scientific references as well. So please, please check it out. Um, Sarah says, hey Mike, can you say hi to Tom in uh, Nottingham in the UK? Um, he's the first comment on here. He's the British version of you and, and your biggest fan. That's cool. Um, yes. Hello, Tom, Tom, what's happening? Um, I need to search, search you and, and we need to connect. So Sarah, thank you for that comment and hello, Tom and hello everyone uh, else. Okay. Uh, Junar J5-9 says heat shock treatment may help the innate immune system. Okay, so uh, heat shock proteins are involved in uh, managing proteostasis and, and um, you know, deranged proteins, aggregate proteins, and so forth. They're induced by heat, by exercise, by sauna. So yeah, um, I truly believe as a, as a, a sauna enthusiast that uh, heat therapy or thermal stress is helpful for both the innate and the adaptive immune system. So yeah, um, with you 1,000%. Okay, has Mike ever addressed the PCR test issue? No, I didn't get into the PCR test issues. Everyone else has been talking about that. The cycle count is way too high. Um, so yeah, um, what else? Andrea says, I must admit in, in a very, very difficult video to follow, but I'm so enthusiastic that it taking this issue channel uh, is very ahead. Okay, Andrea, thank you. Yeah, um, this is a, immunology is technical. Um, what I might do is do a summary of this video in like five minutes later because I realized we did cover a lot and I want it to be intelligible. And most importantly, I want to make these videos so that you can share this information with someone else. So, um, yeah, um, thank you for that, uh, Andrea. Okay. Um, Clive Richardson says, uh, note that the public parallel with the pandemic, uh, if we should call it that, there is a push to destroy local food supply chains and promote fake meat. I know, it's it's crazy, man. And uh, locally producing grown food is, th is the future. So we gotta, we gotta do, we gotta focus on that, my friends. Okay, um, Nick says, what are your thoughts on having IgM antibodies to COVID eight months after infection? So you should not have IgM antibodies post eight months. Um, you would be IgG. Um, so maybe you got reinfected with recently. If you have IgM or IgA antibodies, uh, I would suspect that you would you would have you would if you, especially if you if you have IgM antibodies recently, then you probably got re-exposed, and that might be a good thing that you have adaptive immunity because you were asymptomatic. So um, Nick, really interesting. Uh, I would check your uh, T, T detect. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Angelica says, I'm an immunologist. Love your videos. Angelica, cool. Thank you for your great work. Um, I am not an immunologist by any means. So if I screwed up on the vernacular of the terms, uh, <laughs> I apologize for that. And please let me know where I messed up because um, I'm just, I love immunology and I, but, uh, but it's, I, I just you know, learn through uh, conversations with, with people like yourself and also reading uh, articles. Okay. Uh, Mike, have you gotten a full CBC since your COVID infection? Yeah, I have and liver and everything like that. Um, 
I shared my blood work with you all uh, last time, but I can share it again. Um, you know, the only sort of lasting changes that I noticed um, in, in the five weeks post COVID, my blood pressure was significantly higher. Um, it wasn't in, it was in an early sort of hypertensive state and it's since uh, gone down. So there was, was some stress that lasted about five weeks for me. Um, I should redo a video on that because it's been about 130 days since I got, since I got COVID. But um, yeah, and, and I noticed my blood glucose was, was bumped up a little bit. My fasting glucose was in the low 90s, which it's usually fasting uh, in the high 70s, low 80s. So there, there certainly what, this thing can be stressful. Absolutely. And, and um, so we got to make lifestyle choices and healthy living like the, the path forward. I mean, we're going to be exposed to this. This is endemic. Um, you know, there's new variants of interest that are learning to escape, um, you know, antibody responses and all that. So we have to make healthy living great, but um, no, no other lingering changes uh, besides that. But that's a great question, Robbie. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so AM1 says, Mike, what cycle threshold was your PCR test run at? I didn't get a PCR test, but I got an antibody test. Um, so I had all the signs and symptoms, as did five other people that I was with. Uh, and they had, you know, we were all, we had dinner together right after Thanksgiving. They all got upper respiratory tract symptoms. I just got body aches and a little bit of fatigue for a few days, but I have retested my antibodies twice now and IgG to both, uh, the spike protein and the nucleocapsid are elevated. So I didn't, but another person we got exposed to did run a rapid antigen test and they, they had, um, they had, uh, they, they, they had it. So anyway, um, okay. Uh, uh, Janu Jewel says with regular on use, how do you know if your electrolyte needs support? I, you know, I just go, that's a great question. You know, um, you could probably do some measurements or things like that. Like I, I like to keep it simple. Uh, and again, this is where my bias comes in. Um, but uh, after our sauna, I take two doses of our Myo Relax and Calm, put some Redmond Real Salt in there. Now we are updating that formula to add even more glycine and more uh, potassium. But that gets magnesium, that gets taurine, that gets sodium. You pretty pretty much get everything that you need there. And I find that um, if your electrolyte imbalances are off, if you get up quickly and you get dizzy, uh, if your your pee looks discolored, if you're uh, constipated, constipation can be a uh, a source of dehydration. So that's how you would know that your your electrolytes are imbalanced, uh, or if you have some edema, you know. So you could you could press on sort of the tibia, which is the front muscle of your lower leg, front bone, uh, and see if you have edema. Those would be signs that you have an electrolyte imbalance or or dehydration. But um, I found that to be really effective. Even I'll do three or four rounds at 200 degrees and sweat my butt off. Um, and I found that combination, two scoops of the My Relax and Calm, because again, you're getting a thousand milligrams of taurine, a full gram. Most electrolytes don't have taurine in them. Unfortunately, taurine is, is amazing. Magnesium, again, potassium, all that sort of stuff. So that's what I do. Uh, Clive Richardson says, hey, Mike, how are your chickens doing? Clive, that's a great question. And thank you for the super chat. Um, it's... Uh, the chickens are good. Yeah, they're, they're really, they're, things are good. Um, we haven't bred any chickens this year. Uh, I, I do, uh, I plan to load up the incubator this weekend so we can have some baby chicks because they're really fun. But yeah, chickens are doing great, man. I appreciate that. We, we have 17. Um, we, uh, yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, but I appreciate that, Clive. Um, we don't have pigs anymore. So, um, yeah, so AM1 says, Mike, so it's just inferred that you had it. No, 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 again, IgG antibodies specific to SARS-CoV-2. So if you have antibodies that's specific to a pathogen, that means that your immune system is making adaptive memory to that pathogen. So uh, still having that those antibodies uh, you know, to the nucleocapsid and the spike protein goes to show that, yes, I had the infection. And then other people that I were with all got sick at the same time and had upper respiratory symptoms, and one of them tested positive. So that's how I know. So please, AM1, um, that, that's what's happening here. Uh, okay, AHA says, do you use an infrared or finish sauna? Well, I had an infrared sauna for four years. I sold that to build a an, 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 uh, finish sauna. So if you go back to our playlist uh, here on, on our YouTube channel, you can see the build out, how I built out a uh, classic finish sauna that's fired by a wood burning stove, which is the gold standard, uh, but any sauna is great. Um, 
All this talk about vitamin D lately. Do you think that people are missing out on vitamin A? Yes, I think, Robbie, you have a great question. Uh, vitamin A is is really important uh, as well. Um, but if you're eating a, a real food diet, you should be getting decent amounts of vitamin A. It's in liver, it's in uh, it's in some muscle meat, um, it's in uh, you know root vegetables and things like that. Okay, Andrea. Um, yeah, friends, uh, thank you for tuning all the way in. If you're still here, please hit that like button. Uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you uh, for all your support. I'm just glad that you're here. Uh, happy Mother's Day, or should we say, say Happy Birthing Person's Day? That's what the media is trying to say uh, to change. You know, pretty soon we can't say anything. Remember, it used to be Merry Christmas. You know, now it's happy holidays and anyway, crazy stuff going on, friends. Hopefully you have an awesome rest of your weekend. I'm grateful that you are here live with us. Um, we'll catch you all soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye now. Okay.